A very good morning, everyone. I am Dr. Shifa Khan, second year postgraduate student in the Department of Radio Diagnosis, NRS Medical College and Hospital. And today I'm going to present my paper on diastematomyelia, which I have done under my co-authors, my associate professor, Dr. Sudip Basu, and my senior resident, Dr. Suparna Sang. So... Starting with the introduction, it's basically diastematomyelia is also known as a split cord malformation where it refers to a type of spinal dysraphism, spina bifida occulta type, where there is a longitudinal split in the spinal cord and sagittal division of the spinal cord into two hemicords, each with one central canal, dorsal horn and ventral horn is there. So congenital abnormality, which basically accounts for around 5% of all congenital spinal defects. And uh, clinical presentation, basically the majority of the patients are symptomatic and they present with the signs and symptoms of tethered cord, including leg weakness, low back pain, scoliosis, incontinence. And um, they also have associated abnormalities like meningocele, dermoid, um, cyst club, foot, spinal cord, lipoma, neurendric cyst. Then 90% um, of the patients are females, 90% have tethered cord and 100% have spina bifida. Coming on to the pathology, the condition is believed to occur during the gastrulation stage of development due to abnormal movement and separation of the precursor cells. Specifically, it has been thought that a persistent or abnormal adhesion between the ectoderm and the endoderm creates an additional neuroentric canal, which in turn leads to notochord developing into the two hemicords. An important differential diagnosis is the duplicated spinal cord, also known as diplomyelia. Now, there, there are basically two types. Type 1, which has a duplicated dural sac with common midline spur and type 2, which has only a single dural sac and um, impairment would be less marked in type 2. Type 1, if we see the classical diastematomyelia characterized by duplicated dural sac, hydromyelia, midline spur, which could be osseous, fibrous, osteocartilaginous, vertebral abnormalities like spina bifida is very common, hemivertebrae, butterfly vertebrae, and skin pigmentation is also there, uh, could also be there, like hypertrichosis, which is hair patch, they are very common. And patients are usually symptomatic, they might have scoliosis and tethered cord syndrome. Type 2, which is milder than type 1, so there is only single dural sac, as you can see, in the picture and there's no spur in between and hydromyelia may be present spina bifida may be present and patients are going to be less symptomatic the cord splitting which occurs between l1 and l3 in 50 percent of the cases and t1 and t12 in 25 percent of the cases now this basically is a 10 days old neonate which presented to the department of um um pediatrics and uh, with a large swelling and tuft of hair on the back and cleft lip and palate was also there as you can see in the picture so x-ray was done at the level of the d12 12 for spina bifida was noted with widened interpedicular distance as visible and mri scan was done there's loss of lumbar curvature and the spinal cord is low lying and uh, and attached to the posterior arch defect and at that level evidence of diastematomyelia was also there and the axial t2 image you can see the splitting of the spinal cord into two symmetric hemicords and traversing around a large osseous spur which is um, the prominent osseous spur which classifies it as type 1 diastematomyelia then t1 sagittal image is given and coronal star image showing the division of the cord then um, uh, MRI was basically um, reported as evidence of spina bifida, which was seen involving the lower dorsal and the adjacent lumbar segment. Spinal cord is everting and opening through the posterior arch defect into a cystic swelling, which is suggestive of um, myelomeningocele. Loss of lumbar curvature is there and spinal cord is low lying and attached to the posterior arch defect. Syrinx was also there, but there as such CV junction was normal, no cerebellar uh, abnormality was there. So, uh, if we see the antenatal ultrasound in such patients, the presence of an extra ecogenic focus in the midline between the fetal spine posterior elements has been described as a reliable sign. And plain radiograph, you might see multiple spina bifida level widening of interpedicular distance scoliosis. And clinically, what is important is that you might see some cutaneous stigmata, which indicates the diastomatomyelia level in more than 50% of the cases and fawn tail, which is uh, seen in the picture. Then uh, radiographic findings, you might see the, the uh, level of the um, um, 
um, lower cord where basically spinal cord malformations are more common and occurring between the level L1 and L3 in 50% of the cases and 25% in uh, between T7 and T12. And um, spina bifida, butterfly, or hemivertebrae might also be there. CT is able to better image many of the features, but MRI is the modality of choice for assessing the children with split cord malformations as well as being able to elegantly demonstrate the cord in presence of hydromyelia. It uh, can also assess for the presence of numerous associated abnormalities. Number of references that have been used. Thank you.